Hey y'all, Shannon Morse here. Welcome to Morse Code. Thank you so much for joining me on this basement studio series as I get this entire dream studio built out in my home basement. Last time you joined me on this series, I was talking about my vision for the future studio, what I wanted it to look like, and I was giving you a tour of everything before it's finished. Today, I wanted to tell you about the networking plans and kind of align what is going on here and why we chose putting the networking where we did. I also have a ton of footage of us actually installing the networking so you can see where all of our Cat6 cables are going. Okay, so I gave you a bit of a preview on the last video of my networking closet, but I wanted to give you a more in-depth idea of what is going to go on down here. So we have already pre-wired or pre-ran all of the cables for the room before the walls went up because I didn't want to deal with that after the drywall was installed. I felt like this would be a lot easier and it turns out it was. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what is currently in this household. Since it did come pre-wired with Cat 5e to all of the rooms. Now upstairs, of course, everything is Cat 5e, which is totally fine. And I don't really see a reason to upgrade that right now. Now I'm sure some of you out there will say, oh, but you have to upgrade them. I mean, we really don't. They do fiber just fine. And that's really what we would need them for. Really the only place that I would require faster than fiber would be down here. And that's why we have Cat 6. So upstairs is going to still stay Cat 5e, which is perfectly fine again because this house does get fiber to the door which means that everybody upstairs is going to have one gig up one gig down and that's not an issue at all so these lines were strung by the builder and they did a pretty good job uh, they luckily did label each of them as they come down here so I can show you those in this networking closet so everything is strung down into this networking closet as you can see I do have that hidden I have CenturyLink and they're really great in this area so I I mentioned labeling and this is the labeling that I was talking about. So we have Cat 5e running into each of the bedrooms upstairs. We have one going to the family room. There's one going to the office. Each of those run into this ruckus switch. And then we also have two APs upstairs, a wireless access points that we use for Wi-Fi connections. And the Wi-Fi access points are powered over ethernet. So they are mounted into the ceiling upstairs, which means that I don't have any furniture obstructing their ability to get the Wi-Fi signal out. So you'll notice that we have the blue lines and then there's these white lines as well. So we have all the blue ones that are going into the ruckus switch as well as a couple of the white lines. And then we also have all these cable connections. That's just assuming that you might have cable, which I don't. So we leave them all unhooked. They're just chilling here. They just take up space. For resale though, if we ever like went to resell this house, it is nice to have those already pre-wired into the wall so that people don't have to deal with it. They can just plug whatever they need in. And this is just a little IoT switch for some of my products upstairs. Okay, so with all of that said, what am I going to be doing with the Ubiquity products? So the ruckus, I'm planning on getting rid of the ruckus, the Wi-Fi APs upstairs, and replacing those with all Ubiquity products in the near future. So for now, the Ubiquity products will be used for this home studio setup and network because I do want to keep that one kind of separated out from the home network, just in case I'm reviewing any kind of strange IoT products that I'm unsure about. I just wanna make sure that I'm not putting my own home network at risk for any kind of issues or problems that I might face whenever I'm bringing those kind of products into the studio because I do test a lot of things. But in the near future, once the studio is built, I do intend to replace this ruckus switch and some of the Wi-Fi APs upstairs and actually put in more Ubiquity products because I am already very used to their entire user interface because we used to have those in the Hack5 warehouse. So I can easily use them and I already know how to set them up since I, I already did it. <laughs> okay, so moving on from this closet, which is soon to be recycled and replaced with a actual rack, because I hate this thing. Let's talk about a rack. So I have never built out a rack. This is going to be my first time. Sorry for the spare tiles. They just kind of chill down there. I've never built out a rack. I know that this space is big enough for a little half rack, which would be perfect for me. And I have already spoken to my contractor and asked them about venting this section of 
the basement studio. Since this is going to be walled off, there's going to be a door here that will enter into this networking closet. I will definitely need to make sure that this space does not overheat. Now my contractor already told me that he would be able to take the current ventilation, which we have, the current vents, and be able to create a subset that comes down here to allow for cold air to pass through this room. So the networking rack itself, um, my setup is pretty simplistic to be honest. The only things that I will really need to do are rerun all of these lines, probably up here, and then wire everything down straight into the mini rack. So I have a pretty simplistic idea of what I need to do with the networking rack, but please leave your comments down below if you have more ideas. Basically, I just need to run all of these lines over to maybe the stairs, drill a hole and drop them into my uh, half rack. And then hopefully they can plug in the back so it looks nice and clean and simplistic. I would like to put in a really nice big switch down here that can do up to 10 gigs. That would be very nice. I would also like to include all of my Synology boxes on the rack. So hopefully there's a way that I can stick them on there, either on a shelf or on a mountable station. I'm not really sure because again, I've never built one before. I don't have any virtual servers, no VMs or anything like that. So I really won't need the space for those. I just need a switch and a place for a network attached storage boxes. That's about it. So I think that this will be plenty space for all of those little gadgets. And then I have a few IOT devices that will need to be plugged in down here via ethernet, but that's about it. Okay. So you may be wondering what's going on with the cat six. Why didn't I choose cat eight? Honestly, Cat 6 is great, saves me a little bit of money since I went with these wonderful and beautiful Cat 6 cables. So that saved me a bit of money, but also Cat 6 does 10 gigs. So this is going to be perfect for my needs. Even though all I get is fiber to the door, which again is maximum of one gig fiber that's up and down. If I'm using these for my local connection, which I will be, these will be connected both to internet and to my local network attached storage. That means that I'll be able to access all my NAS devices at much, much greater speed since everything will be hardwired. And it also means that if I'm gaming down here, I will have this nice, fast, hardwired speed for the fiber. So there's a bunch of cables down here and each one goes to a different section of the basement. Some of them are zip tied together. These are going to be going to a four post box, a box that has four ethernet, ports available in it, so I'll be able to supply Ethernet to four different devices at the same desk without having to use an additional switch. Sorry, it's blurry. It was actually really fun to run all of the networking cables because I've never done it before, so I wasn't really sure what all is involved. We chose to go with ones that already had the connectors on them uh, because quite frankly, they weren't that much more expensive than the ones that you would have to you know, tie yourself. So we just got the ones that plug in already and they're ready to go. As you can see, I did label them with these little label makers and I can put those in a link down below. I bought them off Amazon. Amazon. Each of these is designated to a perfect spot on the studio space. We're supposed to maintain social distancing. <laughs> This, this is not proper social distancing. <laughs> so all of the Cat6 cables are going up and over the vent. They are feeding up along the ceiling right there and they are mounted along the ballasts up at the top of the ceiling. So we have four that are bent in a little right angle and they come drop down behind the future set. So I will have four ports back here that I'll be able to plug in 10 gig ethernet cat six. I also have four lines running to what will soon be the future editing station. So these will go behind the editing desk and I will have four ports back here in case I need to plug in a laptop or plug in any additional equipment. Up at the top near the ceiling, I'm going to have a little space where I'll be able to mount my Wi-Fi access point, which will not only give me really, really beautiful coverage for the entire studio, but that will also reach to the back of the house. So I will be able to use this in the backyard as well. I can't wait to have solid Wi-Fi coverage in the back of the yard. Now we have another line which is strung through the pre-done holes that goes all the way over here. You will remember this space from the previous video I made. This is going to my lab. So this is where I'm going to do all my DIY work. This is where I'll have my Arduino my soldering kit, all that good stuff. This is where that ethernet is going to be positioned. There is also one more ethernet 
cable that's going to be going into that back room, which you will see in a future video. I'm teasing the back room, I know. So I have to say huge props to Gabriel who came over here, mask on the whole time, and he helped me install all of the ethernet lines because I had never done it myself and I didn't know what to do. He was super, super helpful. So thank you so much, Gabriel. I appreciate your help so much and I owe you a dinner. You may be wondering why we didn't use the holes that you just punch out of the ballasts up here. Some of them were just way too small for the amount of ethernet cables that we wanted to run. And also because we noticed from some of the cables that were already strung up here, they were very ragged on the edges and I didn't feel comfortable having something run through a very ragged hole. So we just decided to make our own, which are much cleaner. We also don't have any conduit going up here. And I know some of you might mention conduit and I didn't feel a need for it. So we did not choose to go with conduit here since we already have cat six. And I don't think I'm going to be upgrading from cat six anytime soon. Now, if I do, then that'll be something that I learn in the future. But for now, I think this is going to work wonderfully for us. Yay! <laughs> Plug it into the top, turn on there. Switch it over to the radio signal. Oh look, it works. So if I take it far away, it should be this one. It is, yay! I'm recording this snippet at a separate time just to say thank you to my four different product sponsors for the brand new studio. While I am currently in my bedroom studio up here, I did wanna say thank you to them, even though I'm not technically moved down to the basement studio as of yet. So everything that I have received from my product sponsors are still in the boxes, but you will see those later on in this series. So first up, I wanted to say a huge thank you to Alienware for providing the two brand new monitors that I am going to be using at my streaming slash editing desk. Both of these are brand new 34 inch widescreen monitors. Having two widescreen monitors is something that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. So I was very appreciative to Alienware when they said, sure, we can absolutely do that. So thank you so much to Alienware. I also wanted to say a huge thank you to Uplift Desk for providing my brand new desk for my studio. So this is also going to be a part of my editing station, of course, and this is a sitting standing desk. So it's height adjustable so I can sit there or I can stand there and be able to do all of my work. I am a standing desk convert. I used to just sit at my desks 24 seven and since I've always had these kind of jobs where I'm sitting at a desk for hours, that's definitely not good for my health. I love having a standing desk and especially one like this, which is bamboo on top. So it looks really beautiful and it's also 72 inches. So it's huge. It's gonna have plenty of space for those two widescreen monitors from Alienware. My third product sponsor for the brand new studio that is happening down in my basement is Lutron who provided the Cassetta wireless dimmer switches. I actually have a few of these switches in the the rest of my house. So I already had a hub, but I did want to get some of these switches for downstairs in my studio. The reason why I like them so much is because I can voice control these with my Google Home. So I can tell my Google Home to turn on the studio lights to 100% or 50% or whatever it might be. And if they are with a dimmable light, like an LED, like I'm going to have down there, then it is so easy to turn on and off the lights. Or if I'm going to bed, and I totally forgot to turn off my studio lights way down in the basement, and I don't wanna walk all the way downstairs, then I can easily turn them off through my Google Home. They're so easy to connect. There's also an application that you can download for iOS and Android, and I've used that countless times for the other Cassetta wireless switches in my house, so highly recommend. I already know that I love them, and I can't wait to get these things installed in my basement studio. I'll show you how the installation process goes, as long as my electrician lets me do that, because they are putting in a whole bunch of new circuitry for the studio as well but if he lets me do it then I will show you how to install the Lutron switches and then how to set them up as well because it's a very easy process and last but definitely not least is Ubiquity and Amplify so Ubiquity is amazing and I've used their products for years in the Hack 5 warehouse the Hack 5 studio so I already know how to use their products but they make networking equipment so I actually purchased a new rack a networking rack it's a 15U rack 
rack, so pretty small one, but big enough for what I'm gonna use it for. And I also have a Ubiquiti Dream Machine Pro to go in there. I have a brand new Amplify Alien for wireless network connection down there. I have a whole bunch of Wi-Fi 6 APs to connect. I have security cameras that Ubiquiti has provided. So my entire studio is going to be all networked out with Ubiquiti equipment, and I can't wait to build my rack. That's gonna be a whole nother video that you're gonna see on this channel. So those are my product sponsors, and again, thank you so much to each and every one of them. You are going to be seeing them in future videos once I do have all of my equipment unboxed and downstairs in the basement. So I am going to be doing a full tour, and I am going to be doing reviews of all these different products as well. Did I mention I also got a hammock to go under my uplift desk? Because I did. <laughs> I figured why not? All right, I'm gonna go back to the basement for the rest of this video and I will see you in the next one. So I'm pretty sure that is it for the networking side of things, at least everything that I know up till now. So again, huge thanks to Ubiquiti who is going to be providing all the networking equipment for the Future Studio. They're one of my product sponsors. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about the networking or if you have any recommendations of anything that I should do with the equipment once I get a rack and get started on everything in there, let me know. I appreciate everybody for watching this basement studio series and if you missed the last video I'll put a link down below in the show notes in the description so that you can watch that. Props to my patrons, my buy me a coffee friends who provide the caffeine that I always drink on these shows. Thank you so much for the coffees. And also thank you so much for joining my channel memberships which are available down below right next to the subscribe tab. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for subscribing and watching. I will see you on the next series video. Bye. Get that out of your mouth. Get that out of your mouth. Get that out of your mouth! Get that out of your mouth! Come here! Come here! Sit! That's not a treat! You think sawdust is a treat? It's not a treat! I'm sorry. I know, you know that word. It is not a T-R-E-A-T.